Welcome again to Her God, a program for women, by women, and about women's issues. Today we have a very important topic, and that is coming into the Christian faith or reclaiming and being renewed in the Christian faith. And with me we have two guests, Shibani Perincheri from Bangalore, and she's a jewelry designer, lives there with her family, and um, also is in the music ministry. And once again we have uh, Fiona Caroline from Mumbai, who is also in the music ministry and is in the beauty industry. She lives there with her family also. So um, in this topic, I'm reminded of Jeremiah chapter 1, when Jeremiah is first called by the Lord to basically be aware that God had a plan for his life. The Lord tells him, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. So we have a clear message in the book of Jeremiah that not only was Jeremiah known in the womb and God had a plan and was consecrating him for that plan, but each one of us has been designed by God and God has a mission for each one of us. So as we hear um, some testimony today, let us keep in mind that um, God also is working in our hearts and minds and will act accordingly to bring us in, in line with his plan. So um, I'll start with Shivani today because um, you're a new Christian, new yes. into the faith. And um, so we're just wondering how did that happen? How did that, that happen that you were attracted to come into the Christian faith? And Coming back to my roots, I was uh, born in a Hindu family. My parents, uh, I was born and brought up in Delhi, Hindu family, very devout parents. And uh, from a very young age, I've, now looking back, I feel I was spiritually inclined. I, would, uh, I was a very devout Hindu. I used to go to temples, I used to fast, I would keep uh, all the festivals. Then somewhere when I was in my uh, late teens, uh, I was still searching and then I, I remember going to Pondicherry also for a while to look for the truth. So I was always... I guess looking back, searching for the truth in uh, different religions. So you and weren't just settled and doing rituals. You were there was an active yes, uh, uh, so an inquisition going on, inquiring yes. into what's yes. happening. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And then um, uh, in my uh, early twenties, I met my present husband, and he happens to be from a Catholic family. And um, so then the clause was that you have to get converted if you want to get married. So I took my parents' permission and they were like, okay, fine. I mean, if that's what you really want to do. And to tell you frankly, at that point of time, it was all about wanting to get settled to this person mm -hmm. I really was in love with. Mm -hmm. And I still remember going and meeting sisters and... Uh, they, were, they very sweetly initiated me into the faith, but unfortunately, I wasn't unable to grasp the message of salvation back then. Mm -hmm. And um, so I got baptized with uh, no idea about uh, what Jesus has done for each one of us. So, so it wasn't like um, a real challenge to your already Hindu faith that to make this step wasn't going to be something that was wrong or... Yeah, that we actually were brought up with this concept that God is one. Okay. Right? That's what I yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> Most of the Hindus follow this concept that God is one. Mm -hmm. And uh, though I, was, I hadn't even stepped into a church before I actually got baptized, and um, I'd never seen what a Bible looks like. Um, but still, uh, we always kind of respected mm -hmm. all faiths, you know, growing up. And uh, so Christianity for me was also one such faith then, you know, yeah. they, it wasn't anything bad. Mm -hmm. And um, so having got converted, I had no idea about who Jesus actually was and what had he actually done for each one of us. I didn't even know what my sins were. In fact, for my first confession, uh, I was like, I don't think I have done any sins, mm -hmm. quote unquote, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, as a Hindu, we don't consider our, these, even the sins of our heart as anything, you know. And we think we have sinned only if we have probably murdered someone. And um, 
So even after marriage for, um, quite, for quite a few years, maybe a couple of years, uh, I was just a very lukewarm kind of a individual. I, and no one in my family, like my in-laws, they didn't force me to, you know, like follow the faith. Mm -hmm. But um, looking back, my in-laws, the way they followed the faith really inspired me to at least start wondering what is so special about them. And, uh, so what, what were they doing that, that, was it their prayer or their... Yes, the way they accepted me into the family, oh, okay. the way they used to handle situations, the way they would advise me and uh, my mother-in-law's prayer life, my husband's sister's prayer life, and even my father-in-law's conversion, um, I mean, f when I got married, the kind of person that he was, and then uh, he was, uh, uh, he came down with cancer and heart disease, and that totally changed him. And uh, the way he gave his life, surrendered his life into the hands of Jesus, that's when I started thinking, who is this Jesus? Let me, let me at least dig a little bit and find out about him. And... Uh, by God's grace, he sent a few people in my life who started witnessing to me, like from the outside, they would come, they would uh, read to me the word of God, and they started explaining it, um, like, you know, the different questions that I had about salvation. I was like, what is salvation? I just could not understand why we need to be saved, first of all, you know? And um, initially, uh, when, I, when I experienced the touch of Christ, I, it was just took, took over my entire life, you know. I was totally on fire. Mm -hmm. I would go and tell people on the uh, aircraft. I would go and tell my families in Delhi. And, and um, how did you experience that touch? That it just it just when it? I actually finally opened my heart, oh, okay. it was like without beyond beyond doubt that this is the truth. Okay, so the the Lord came in your heart, yes, basically. Yes, yeah. He just came yeah. in and. Uh, it, there was no doubt at all after that that there there is any other God other than Christ himself. And I was like literally like bubbling with that love in him. If ever I, even if I bumped into a not a man, I would be talking to him about okay. Christ, you know. Mm -hmm. And I would be like witnessing left, right, center, telling people about uh, this wonderful person, God person who I had experienced. And, uh, those and you, were, you were already a Catholic at that time, yes. right? So it kind of made everything even more rich. Yes, probably. yes, yeah. But those days I had no uh, idea. I mean, initially when I got married, I didn't know. I, would, I wasn't obviously a mass-going Catholic. Uh -huh. So I didn't even know what the Eucharist was. Mm -hmm. You know, for me it was just one piece of bread. And I didn't know that it was actually the body and blood of Jesus himself. So you know what's very interesting is that even though you had studied the catechism with the yes. sisters and all, that without the Holy Spirit, we cannot understand the place of this faith in our personal life. Yes. And I think Fiona has a, a, an additional testimony to what you're saying, um, is that without the Holy Spirit, this whole religion cannot be understood, nor does it really mean anything personally. Correct. You know? So Fiona, what happened to you to cause you to have the similar experience while being a Catholic so I must say that uh, while Shibani married into the Catholic faith, mm -hmm. I married out of the Catholic faith. So I married a non-Christian. Mm -hmm. And um, my first and only request was that my, we marry in church and that my children get baptized, which was uh, agreed upon. Um, unfortunately for me, my parents didn't agree to the match even if he decided to marry in church they said no we will not accept a non-christian in the family so i was left no option but to marry him anyways because that was a promise or a commitment that i made to him years passed and i realized one thing that we might make promises but god holds those promises. Even if you didn't make those promises in front of 10 people, you made it to one another. He keeps those, he wants you to keep those promises. 
Now, everything was fine. I have three children. I had three boys and everything was going fine till I had problems with my husband. So the problems were there, but I never told them to anybody. Mm -hmm. I kept them all in my heart because it was a decision I made and I decided to marry this person. So if I have decided to marry somebody, I must be able to stand up and, you know, walk uh, whatever might be the ups and downs that come in, in this marital journey. At that point of time, I had a friend who visited me because she had encountered the Lord. Mm -hmm. I found her one day at my door and I was surprised why she there. And she started getting me into the faith by asking me to open the Bible and read. The moment I started opening the Bible and reading, there was even more pandemonium in the house. And I didn't understand that because I was a church-going Christian. I went to church. I did my part of going and following. It was like a ritual every Sunday morning going to church. I had no experience of a one-on-one -on -one experience with or a relationship with Jesus. I didn't know that I could just say impromptu prayers. It was only then that I went. And the moment I started opening the Bible, I realized God was start, started to speak to me. And also the fact that there are two kinds of, of warfares that happen, the good and the bad. And you can feel spiritual warfare happening. And that's when you know that the God you're praying is talking to you. And there's someone else who's getting disturbed by, the, by your prayer. And so you, you were sort of a passive Catholic, just going about the routine um, of you know, going, keeping the rituals. Um, it was fine with your husband and all, but when you started to open the Bible and you started to have some spiritual experience, then some type of spiritual... So I can say this, for me it was new as well. I didn't know that the Word of God had so much of power. So when I, from the time I was married, I went to church almost all Sundays, and he came with me as well. Uh, the children came as well, so there was no problem. There was a time when he stopped coming and um, the kids didn't come and then because we had issues I had to resort, I had to take refuge in something and what was that something? The word of God came to my refuge and when I started to open the Bible it was only then I realized that instead of me I was getting stronger inside like from being a timid, from being somebody who could not give back. I was now bold. I could speak. I could say what I wanted to. And I, um, you know, that was something that was different. So although in the external there was nothing, I was yet the homemaker, yet made the food, yet did everything, was there for everything. But this was from inside where I could now say what I wanted to say. And when I was told that a time came when I knew that it was the word of God, when I was told that you cannot read the Bible in this house, this is not a Christian home. And then I said, well, but you married one and you made those promises, so how can you say something like that? And it was only then the realization that the word has so much power. And you don't, see, I, for me it was a new beginning. I never experienced that before in my own home as a child because we never opened the Bible. Mm -hmm. We just went to church. We were just churchgoers. We never opened and read the Word of God. Today I know it. My children know uh, the Word of God. So uh, it's important to know this, that the Word of God has power. Mm -hmm. And that there, are, there is a pandemonium that can happen if you have a, a kind of warfare that happens, which you don't see. An external person will never see it. But you know that there's something going on which is, which is strange, which is um, like um, you can't explain it, but you know there's, there are two forces that are, that are having a battle in, in, in the realm. Mm -hmm. and so that, in, that, that real that contrast that you saw gave you a, also you had to build up your strength to fight back. Yes. I, I'm sure internally the fighting back being, I want to hold on to this faith. I yes. want to hold on to what now I have just experienced. And when you start seeing the disturbance because of it, what the disturbance wants is like 
like he was told you, put it away and close it up and it's not allowed here. Yes. Then, and then yeah. I had to say, but I'm not ringing bells. I'm not making a noise. I'm opening a book and sitting in the quiet of at, at six o'clock in the morning when everyone is asleep. So why should it bother anybody? Uh, and my refusal then was when I was told that I should do certain rituals which were never told to me before. And I was like, I didn't do this in, before. Now why do I need to do it? I was told not to go near your, uh, your temple. Now why do I need to do something when it's not something that it comes naturally to me. And now all the more because I'm becoming stronger, I was told to do something like that. And I couldn't understand that. So that's what kind of, there's, there's, you know, positive effects internally. What was the internal positive effect then of like finding this, um, this while well, you were sharing, Shivani, about the joy that you had that you wanted to share with everyone that was bubbling over, you were saying. Yeah, I mean, as uh, Fiona said, it's a lot more than just joy. I mean, basically just, as she said, like even for me, eventually it all boiled down to reading the word of God. There was no earth shattering sound which came from heaven saying, you are my daughter, I'm well pleased in you. It was all about waking up in the middle of the night, any time of the day, even if you are sitting, you are sitting in, a, in an office waiting for someone, you, every moment of the day, you are just dying and you're like waiting to read and to take into the word, to thirsting for the word, day and night. And um, yes, and initially the word for me was like, I think it was the Lord, whatever I would ask for, the Lord would just grant but over the years, he has strengthened me. So it's not like, you know, when I've gone through the, like, the most toughest times in my life where I was all alone, there was nobody. I mean, I had my in-laws, I had my parents, I had everyone, but nobody could help me because they are, they are after all, humans. And nobody could be there and give me that solace. And, you know, when I just wanted to, like, quit, but it was at that point of time, in the middle of the night, when there was nobody, and for months and years that, you know, that word sustained. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't that the problem got okay. The Lord didn't like overnight take the problem away, like did some magic. But he gave that grace, that strength to hold on. You know, even if you're like dying inside and you're like flat on the floor, and then you're like, Lord, I don't think I can do this. I don't want to do this. But end of the day, like the last sentence is with tears. Okay, Lord, what is your will? I have, to, I will do that. So that strength comes only through the word. And um, that those are the things that and we hold on to. The sacraments, yes. are the, you know, Jesus Christ incarnate in our world. That's such, such a powerful thing. Yes. But the word is how we really know who he is yes. and his powers. Um, yeah, and that, that becoming more solid in yourself is what I'm hearing. Yes. That you, you, you create, what do we want to say, like, there's some fortitude that's given. Some yes. fortitude that comes into us yes. when we have to fight a battle like that. And it's a battle. This, this reminds me, I believe it's Luke 21, 19, one of my favorite verses in the Bible. Now it's an unusual verse, 21, 19. And it is this, Jesus says, by your perseverance, you will win your soul. Hmm. That it's by hanging on yes. when there's nothing else to hang on to. That's what Jesus expects us to do. Um, and he will carry us through to the other side. But um, so uh, what happened then, Fiona? With, so, with, your, with your journey, now you're in this warfare and, and now yes. you're a singer. I just wonder what happened between. So what happened was, so one fine day I was told that I, you know, I have to leave the house. I can take the three boys and go. And I said, no way. I left my parents to come here. I'm not going to leave this to go anywhere. And all because I am opening the Bible. I said, uh, will anybody give a divorce decree because you're opening the word? I, I mean, that was something that was very strange. I stood my ground and I decided, I told many people to pray. There were many people praying for me. But one fine day, one day, it was six in the evening and I just knew that I had to leave. It was strange. 
<laughs> All this time I was fighting not to go and then suddenly I was told, pack, leave now. I don't know, it was not a voice, it was just that I had to do it. In a few minutes I had everything, all my certificates and everything packed and I went away from that house never to go back again. Taking my three boys, it's about 13 years now mm -hmm. and I can say the Lord has, with nothing, I had absolutely zero paise, nothing. Just my certificates, just the three boys and the Lord with me. And I went and I lived for a few days with my dad's brother. The first job I got, I was taken for, I, was, I mean, I got that job. But before I went for the job, I went with my boys for a retreat in, uh, in Tabor. And the lady just marked a few words in the Bible and she told me, all you need to do is read this. Mm -hmm. I just read that. I just read that not understanding anything, just reading, every day reading. And I got a call that you have this job. And 10 years I worked for that company. And then the Lord took me from that job to another one where I, without even asking for an, another job, I got another job. And today I work there. And in my journey, I had only told the Lord one thing. If you give me a Saturday off, I will serve you. So I have a Saturday and a Sunday. I will never refuse on a Saturday, Sunday. If you tell me, come on a Saturday, Sunday, anywhere for the Lord, sing for the Lord, I am all ready. So it was a divorce based on the Bible reading? Uh, so the divorce was all related to wanting to convert children, my children to Christianity, which was not right, because I never even baptized them. So that didn't come into the picture. It was everything was related to actually the word of God. Mm, interesting. That's a, that's a real persecution. I mean, in a way, you know, that's a terrible. There was nothing else that he had against me, but he could only find that. Mm -hmm. So this, um, this coming to the faith and getting empowered is, is it's a cross. I mean, it's, um, it's the sword, yes. you know, and Jesus even says, you're going to have to make a choice. And I think I reflect on that when Jesus says, everyone will hate you. And I look around sometimes at hundreds of people and I think, oh Lord, if everyone hated me, I don't think I could, I don't think I could tolerate it, but better be ready for such things. But for, the Lord has taken care of you. So. Yeah, I would also say this, that in the time that I was at, uh, at my marital home, and if I went through persecution, I never showed it. So even my next door neighbor never knew about it. Mm -hmm. And one fine day she must have realized that she's not there. Where is she gone with the three boys? So people might have thought I just left, mm -hmm. but nobody knew what was happening. Mm -hmm. Because I always, I think the word of God also gives you the strength that like Shivani said, to have that smile, to keep joyful, to be happy. Like you won't have a tired look and make people feel that, oh, I've got lots of burdens on my head. Nobody knew hmm. because you always had the, the smile Joy on your face. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That inner buoyancy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So it's kind of earth shattering, this whole thing. So how are you doing the ministry? This is another point that um, when, when people come into the Catholic faith, even in the Catholic catechism, it says, those who come into the faith now, your life is no longer your own. And you're there to be serving the church. I think the new Catholics get it better than those who've been in a long time. But how are you serving in your church? Yeah, uh, I'm really privileged, really. I only thank the Lord because sometimes I just look at myself and I'm like, Lord, there is nothing special in me. There is nothing. But you had your finger on me. Why out of so many millions and millions of people you chose me and not just that to be part of your kingdom, you are using little me mm -hmm. for like reaching out, taking, re like I'm part of this ministry called Bread of Life and um, they are the uh, oldest prayer group in Bangalore. It's a renewal. So it's not just about rituals. It is more about the Holy Spirit anointing. It's, it's about taking retreats. It's about really like giving our life to the Lord and that goes for each and every member of our prayer group. So we do, we do a lot of uh, like we take worship, we, we have our Thursday meetings, we go for outreach and um, so I just sometimes wonder like Lord what, why would you choose a person like me? I am a nothing. You know and to give me the chance to not just be a regular Christian but to serve you 
to serve the kingdom. And uh, so that's a real privilege for me. And, but yes, it, it sometimes it's, it's difficult for people to understand. You know, for them, it's like, oh, you are a, as long as you're a Sunday Christian, what do you want to be part of this renewal thing, you know? Why you want to give your vacation, like holidays for doing the work? And um, like even my parents, they find it very strange. Like, what is this all, you know, uh, taking retreats and going and, you know, like they can't understand. And even my own husband, mm -hmm. he sometimes, like, you know, he doesn't stop me, but he's like, uh, this is not my cup of tea, you know. <laughs> but uh, I think this, this is what actually helped me also when I was going through the tough times, my uh, service to the Lord, it helped me because it gave me that more that inner strength and I had fellowship with like-minded people. You have to, you have to call, you have to get out of your own pity, yes. you know, out of your own self yes. and serve. And that's very empowering. Yes. And it's very empowering. And of course, now it's like, uh, because I, the Lord has got me this job and uh, I go for intercession every day. So I had prayed, um, I wanted to, uh, like, you know, I was, I had my own business, but because my children were growing up, so I kind of took a break. So then finally I said, okay, if something good comes up, I'll take it up. But my only clause was, Lord, I have to go for my intercession from 12.30 to 1.30. And you won't believe he's got me a job, which is like 100 uh, feet away from where I go for intercession oh, and that's it's a miracle really yeah. and I spoke to those people and I said I'm gonna be out for this time they have no issues so every day 12:30 to 1 30 I'm out I just walk down I join the intercession and I come back this is the lovely I noticed too in the United States usually the daily mass is late it's like 8 o'clock in the morning or 9 o'clock and who can go to mass and go to work, you know? Yes. But I've found that, and when people complain to me, oh, we wish we could go to mass, I've found that if I ask the Lord and tell him, I need to go to daily mass, whatever job I take, mm. please, you know? Sure enough, there is always somewhere, somehow, the last job I had, I literally left the job at five and walked down the hill in San Francisco and in 15 minutes, I reached the Mass, which started at 5.15. Mm, yes. Then I would walk, continue on from there and go catch the ferry. But I said, you won't believe the miracles when you ask the Lord, I want to pray every day. Mm. I want to go to Mass every day. I want to go to confession. Mm. I've had the priest just show up. There he is, you know. So, so um, as we continue on our journey, maybe you can give a few hints to people um, who are searching how to find and a few, just little advice. I can only uh, say one more thing in terms of what Shibani said. When I came back and how am I serving the Lord is that once you come back, like for example, in India, people don't look at you well if you left your marital home, mm -hmm. despite what you might have gone through. So at that point of time, the Lord gave me the grace to always hold my head high and never feel down about my own self. And I did that because I think it was the prayer that helped me to do. Otherwise, I would have been a different person. And so it started with serving, serving in not only where uh, like a friend of mine is a preacher. So wherever she goes, she would take me along and I would sing and help in the praise and worship. So it started with small things and also started to help me by sending women who were in similar situations that I could relate to them and help them. So sometimes your ministry can be anything. He might just... Just counseling the people, people. That, the people that come to you. So this um, doing the ministry, sharing what we've received is very empowering for women and it will help you also in your faith life. And um, don't be ashamed. The Lord is with you no matter what situation has happened in the past. So we thank you so much for joining us and do hope that you will join us next week for another important topic on Her God.